Our brains are amazing. They can literally rewire around damaged areas so signals can get through using an alternate route. It's called neuroplasticity, and there are things that we can do to encourage it. In today's video, we're going to talk all about neuroplasticity and exercise with my guest, Dr. Gretchen Holly. She is a physical therapist and multiple sclerosis certified specialist and founder and creator of The Missing Link, a program that helps people with MS feel more confident through their strength, walking, and daily activities. Welcome, Dr. Gretchen. Thank you so much for having me. So glad that you're here again. So let's start with telling our viewers, tell me a little bit more about neuroplasticity. What is it and how, how does it work? Yeah. So neuroplasticity is one of my favorite things to talk about. It's kind of a tongue twister. A lot of people will say neuroplasty. So if you see that anywhere, they're probably talking about the same thing, but neuroplasticity is the ability of our brain to do two things. Number one, strengthen our neural pathways. And number two, find brand new neural pathways. And for those that may not know, a neural pathway is something that runs from our brain all the way down our spinal cord and other nerves down to the muscle that we want to use. So in order for me to bend my elbow, there needs to be as something in my brain that says, bend your elbow. And then a bunch of neural pathways fire and light up all the way down to my elbow. And then I bend it. But if you have MS or really any condition that affects your myelin, that affects neuroplasticity. So these neural pathways might be really weak. And if that's the case, neuroplasticity, when you implement it into your exercises, can strengthen those neural pathways that have weakened. But in other people, you might go to bend your elbow or lift your ankle, lift your leg, and there's no movement at all. That means that that neural pathway is just completely not working. So in that case, neuroplasticity is the ability to rewire itself and find a totally new way to get from point A to point B. So it's, it's really exciting because that means that it can work for anyone, regardless of what strength you do or don't have. You know, it's fascinating. I love that our brains have the ability to do this. Um, how long does it take for neuroplasticity to work? So that's a tricky thing because we don't know. And unfortunately, it takes a different amount of time for each person, especially considering if you're strengthening versus completely rerouting. What I can say is that while we don't know from research what time it takes, there's no protocol that says like, do 10 of these exercises three times a day for six weeks. And that's when you'll get neuroplasticity. There's nothing like that. But I can say that from my clients that I work with, when you do exercises that are specific to that muscle that you're trying to strengthen, if your brain is strengthening the neural pathways that are there just weakened, people can see improvements in as short as just a few days, a few weeks, or a few months. Wow. So, that's amazing. It is. So it, it sounds like neuroplasticity is a lot like MS. It's, you know, we're a snowflake disease. We all have it differently. So our neuroplasticity yeah. is going to be unique for each of us as well. Absolutely. And in that case, it's really dependent on if you've been overcompensating or not. So for a lot of people with MS and weakness, without even realizing it, your body started overcompensating with other muscles that were stronger in order to produce the action that you want to do, like walking or stair climbing, something like that. So it might not be that the neural pathway was so weak. It's just that you weren't using the neural pathway. So for those people where you do see differences in three days, four days, even a week or two weeks, while I, it's not, it may not technically be neuroplasticity if that's the situation where you just weren't use, utilizing it. So you're just waking up that neural pathway, which is different than strengthening the neural pathway. And then it's different than rerouting. If you have to reroute that honestly can take up to a year, sometimes two years. So you really got to stay consistent and have that belief that it is coming. Oh, that's really interesting. I have a friend who also has MS and he was recently told that his 
I'm going to butcher this performius performius the the muscle on the outside of the glute yep was weak and it wasn't from his ms it was from the way he was walking and he was compensating so now he's working on strengthening that muscle again that's fascinating stuff um so talk a little bit about uh neuroplasticity and age is there an age limit do we do our brains get old enough that we can't do this anymore so it is a factor, but neuroplasticity, according to current research, works for everyone, regardless of age. So even if you are 90 years old, it's slower, so it will take longer. But there's no research saying that once you hit this age or this level of MS or this anything, that it won't work for you. Okay, that's great news. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me a little bit about maybe a story or two from your Missing Link members and the improvements that they've seen. So one thing that always I just love hearing because so many people with MS feel like neuroplasticity is too good to be true. And I, I keep hearing these testimonials of, and feedback just over and over and over again of of all the different types that we just talked about, like the people that see results in three days or a few months or a year, but they're all the same in that they're doing the exercises consistently. And then they finally, it's like, whoa, it's like this light bulb moment. Like, oh my gosh, my foot drop is better, or I'm, I'm able to march better. So one of my clients, she was a member for about three months. And one thing that she was focusing on extensively was strengthening her hip muscles. And she used to go to a park with her husband, but she would just sit in her role later and watch him walk around. But as she was practicing these exercises within three months, she got to a point where she could do one lap around the park. And that was huge for her. Like, not only is that great physically because it's great to walk, but think about like the conversation that she was then able to have with her husband during that walk. So, so many results that my missing link members have are directly correlated with quality of life and participation in life and conversations or things that you can now do. So that was one, um, quite frequently I will have people again, three or four days in specifically with foot drop. So foot drop will be one of their biggest symptom. And I received an email uh, three days later. She said, I've only been in your program for three days. I hope this stays around, but I'm already noticing an improvement in my foot drop. So I'm tripping less. And that to me is huge as well, because tripping causes fear of falling. And when you have that fear, you walk differently, you present yourself differently in the world. And so just having more confidence can skyrocket your potential. So that was another really unique experience. More on the longer side, I was working with a client for probably nine months, maybe nine or 10 months. And she was focusing on hip strengthening, her knee strengthening ankle so that she could improve her walking. And just slowly, but surely she was seeing improvements, nothing drastic, just a little bit of improvement here and there. And then by that 10 month mark, she not only was able to improve her walking, but specifically walking on uneven surfaces, which was her whole goal because her daughter was getting married on a beach. And so oh, she needed to be able to walk on the sand and she was able to do that. So it, it's those quality of life moments for me that, that really make it so, so memorable. Oh, that is, so, those are great stories. You know, the, the consistency you're talking about, that really is key with almost every area of our life. And, you know, to see those small incremental changes over time, you know, you mentioned the foot drop and the fear of falling and then you know, we don't participate or, you know, we don't have the strength to do that lap around the park and we miss out on a lot in life. And, you know, when I talk with my viewers, sometimes I hear that fear is their biggest concern. They're fearful for the future. They're fearful of falling. You know, they're fearful of the what ifs. And if we can be consistent with our exercise and our neuroplasticity and strengthening those, those roots and those signals, it can make a huge impact on not only our physical abilities, but our quality of life. Those are great stories. Thank you. Of course. Um, our brain health is, is super important. We all know that, especially when we have MS. Are there other activities that we can do that can improve our brain health? 
Yes. And when it comes to brain health and neuroplasticity, there's things that you can do that will affect both of them. Uh, one thing, and this is somewhat newer in research, but one thing that we know that can improve both is novelty. So doing something new that not only improves brain health, but the more things that you do that are new, that challenge your brain, the more of this specific chemical that is released that allows for neuroplasticity to happen. And so when you're trying new things and doing new things, neuroplasticity is more likely to occur quicker for you. And you can do that in multiple ways. That might mean that you create some newness during your exercise routine. Like you try a completely new type of exercise, or it could mean you're doing your normal exercise routine, but in between repetitions or sets, you try to write with your opposite hand. You're learning this new activity or this new skill or nothing to do with exercise, but during some of your spare time, you learn how to knit or you color in a coloring book. So doing something that's new is amazing for our brain. Oh, that's such great information. You know, every once in a while, I'll try to use my non-dominant hand to do things like brush my teeth. You know, it's funny, uh, you know, I don't do a great job, but you know, you're right. Doing something new that challenges our brain, of course, is going to increase, uh, you know, the neuroplasticity and how we learn and how we do things. That's really cool. Um, any other tips that you want to share on neuroplasticity? So two other things I can think of. One other things that you can do to increase neuroplasticity to make sure it happens for you and it happens quicker is to be extremely focused on the exercise that you're doing. Research shows that the more focused, the more alert you are for that specific movement, the more likely it is for neuroplasticity to happen quicker for you. So that's another thing. Um, also, I just thought of another thing. So three things. The second thing it doesn't matter what type of movement you have. I know I mentioned this in the beginning, but I cannot stress it enough. So many of my clients who are looking to improve their walking and maybe they can't lift their leg at all, or they can't lift their toes at all. If I were to give them the exercise of lift your toes, they would say to me, I can't what's next. Like they wouldn't even try because they assume that not seeing any movement means that there's no possibility for progress here, but that's not what that means. You have to keep attempting. That's the only way to find those new neural pathways. And the third thing is that research shows that everything we're talking about neuroplasticity is possible for people with brain lesions. There's very little research on neuroplasticity for people with spinal lesions who have MS. However, there's no research saying that if you have a spinal lesion, neuroplasticity won't work for you. And so every neurologist I ever talked to, I asked them like, Hey, what are your thoughts on neuroplasticity and spinal lesions? And the consensus is the same for everyone, which is we don't know. So act as if, if you have spinal lesions, still do the exercises as if they are going to improve the same way with brain lesions. And my missing link members, lots of them have spinal lesions, but they've still seen improvement. So Anecdotally, I can say that even though research doesn't support that, it we have seen time and time again that it does work. So I just wanted to throw that out there in case anyone had any doubts. That's such great news. You know, when you think about the 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 brain volume, and we have a lot of extra neurons than we do in our spine. So, you know, it makes sense that, oh, if you have a spinal lesion, it's going to be hard to get around. There's not as much wiggle room there. So it's great that you're anecdotally seeing improvements. This is such great information. So thank you so much for all of this. This has been so helpful. Um, working on neuroplasticity and brain health for people with MS involves such specific exercises and physical therapy techniques. So tell our viewers, where can they find you and how can they work with you? Yeah. So there's lots of places you can find me. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I share education like neuroplasticity as well as neuroplasticity based exercises. So if you're looking to follow along, learn some more physical therapy for MS, my YouTube page is Dr. Gretchen Hawley. I also have my online MS wellness program, the missing link, which is missinglink.com spelled M S I N G link. I'm on Instagram as Dr. Gretchen and my Facebook is also Dr. Gretchen Holly. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I will put links to all of Dr. Gretchen's uh, social media and websites below so that you can find them. 
Thank you again. It has been just a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. All right, my friends, that's it for today's video. If you like this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up under the video, the like button. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Until next time, be well.